All right, welcome back to another episode of the chalkboard. I don't cringe at that. You do. I I'm great at these names. Yes. Anyways, uh, yeah, welcome back to another episode. Last episode, we were talking about games in general, video games that have been released recently, upcoming releases as well, and the games that I just enjoy in general in that topic. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about food and cuisine and stuff like that that I know how to make, stuff that I wish I knew how to make, and things that I generally just suffer with other than life but you know <laughs> yeah today's episode is going to be focusing more on my skills in the food industry and some of my experiences in it although not necessarily focused on the experiences themselves because one job is not indicative indicative of an entire industry right every restaurant every place that offers food to you whether it's prepped in front of you or it's just like a prepackaged meal or something that you have to cook yourself every experience is going to be different right so i have worked in a few different places along the the, the chain of food and cuisine uh, i've been a farmhand i've been uh, a factory worker i've been a cook i've been a line cook i've been part of like the shipping portion of factory work as well where uh, i packaged fish for a while made sure that it was refrigerated and made sure that it was frozen if it was frozen itself and packaged correctly so that it would stay fresh right now uh, we're gonna start off with some like simple stuff right my favorite food or drink that i usually have every day these things are things i generally just make every day not because they're complicated to make but because it's simple easy straight to the point and i enjoy it right so many people who know me know that i drink tea every day i drink orange pico which is the kind of tea that my dad drank and it gives me that little sense of home when every time i drink it because i i miss my parents a lot because i don't get to see them very often but tea in general is one thing that i do consume a lot black tea black tea if i could learn how to speak is the t the type of tea that I drink. I'm okay with certain other black teas, but I generally just stick to one. I'm very mon like I I I just generally like having one kind of thing and I don't get bored of it very easily. Sometimes I do and I just don't drink tea for like a day or two and then I go back to it and it's just like, "Oh my god, this is the best thing ever." Oh my god. But I I drink orange pico tea personally and some people might hate it, but I do put milk and sugar in my tea. Some people don't like it. They just like straight up black tea and sometimes that's good too i've done it on more than a few occasions but in general i'm a very easy person to please in terms of food because with the amount of time that i've spent in the food industry i've essentially concluded that i don't like cooking for myself i love cooking for other people i love cooking i love the process of cooking I love preparing a meal and making it look good, making it taste great, unless it's for me. Then I will make the easiest goddamn thing in the world. My most consumed food at this point is peanut butter sandwiches. Simple, straight to the point. I love bread. I love peanut butter. I'm going to eat it, right? So typically I make peanut butter sandwiches with just simplistic white bread. Although whole grain can be good sometimes. Just very, it, it's one of those types of food, like whole grain bread. It, it's one of those types of food that like you get a craving for like once or twice a year. It's this, it's along the same lines for me as orange juice. I hate orange juice. I hate oranges. I don't know why I just do. But then there's that one point in the year, that one freaking point of the year where you're just like, I want orange juice with pulp give now give now <laughs> in general meals that i eat are very simplistic i don't go over the board with it recently i've been getting back into actually you know cooking for myself mostly because with my mental health i need to keep busy if i do not keep busy your thoughts go down the drain okay 
So getting back into cooking is a good thing for me to do, especially since that is the career that I've had for a long time. I was a cook for like, what, four years? And although the, the place that I worked at, which shall not be named because it was a kind of shit was, uh, the job itself, I enjoyed. I enjoy prepping meals. I enjoy cooking food that people enjoy and seeing the way their, their face lights up when you give them their meal, you know? And so I've gone back into cooking for large meal prep portions, right? So meals that I've made in general, keep in mind that the, the food that I cook usually for like myself is comfort food, right? So things that when your stomach is full, you just sit there in a food coma and it's not overly sugary. It's not overly like fattening or anything. Although some people can consider it fattening for certain par par like parts of the food. The food I, I, I like to cook personally is comfort food. So stuff like spaghetti, mac and cheese, stuff like that, right? Speaking of mac and cheese, my favorite food to actually eat and cook is mac and cheese and spaghetti. Those are my favorite foods. And an honorable mention for pizza, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, my favorite food to make in general, uh, I make pretty good spaghetti sauce. I make, I make everything from scratch because it just tastes better that way. And yeah, it does take a while. It doesn't leave you feeling like crap afterwards. It usually feels you full and you're like, oh God, why did I eat all of it? But it, it typically is better. And the list of food that I have in mind right now that I can remember off the top of my head is like spaghetti sauce, quesadillas, uh, burgers, uh, <laughs> Philly cheesesteak. I, I can make that too, uh, although not very well anymore because I'm out of practice. Uh, I can do some Lebanese food as well, but again, out of practice. Baking and stuff is kind of 50-50 for me because I can't make bread, okay? I love bread. I love eating bread. Bread is great. I burn bread. Don't know how. Every time I just burn it. Speaking of burning, <laughs> I also cannot make pasta. I don't know why I can never make it al dente. I either make it too soft or I make it like not cooked well enough so it ends up being crunchy. Yeah, it's really weird. I get my girlfriend to do that. Say if I'm making pizza, right? I can make great like like pizza sauce. I can do the cheese, I can do the the pepperoni, everything. I can do all of that myself. Except for the dough. So that's where the girlfriend comes in. Girlfriend makes the dough, uh, girlfriend makes the pasta, and it takes both of us to make the meal, but the meal's good. Uh, in general, I just like cooking for other people, right? So all these meals that I make are comfort food, as I mentioned before. It, it's meals that will fill you up, you enjoy the taste of them, you sit around the table eating them with your family, having a good chat, or watching a movie together and stuff. Um, uh, other things that I make are stuff like hot chocolate. Or hot cocoa. I have this thing that I do to hot uh, hot chocolate mix. I add some cinnamon. I add some vanilla extract and whatnot alongside all the marshmallows and stuff. And the way I make it is just really nice. I have uh, an obsession with <laughs> taking pictures of hot chocolate that I make simply because it looks good. The way I make it is good. And people always want me to make them one whenever they're over and stuff like that. I've also been told that I make really good tea, although it's it's really simple to make tea. You just steep it for a good amount of time. Uh, my personal taste is a, a little bit of milk with two sugars. That, that's what I do. I also can make pretty decent breakfast food like eggs, egg sandwiches, bacon, egg and cheese, stuff like that. Although again, it that relates to like the last job I did where it's what I did for like four years. I did breakfast food, I did lunch food. Uh, I didn't make very many meals, like uh, dinner. Is it dinner? Some people say dinner, some people say supper. I say uh, supper. I didn't really make that much supper type of food. 
although you could consider like burgers and stuff like that a supper food but in general that's more of a lunch thing right for a lot of people so foods that i want to like th there are foods that i want to learn how to to make right like gumbo you, you you know you hear all those stories of gumbo from like the deep south and whatnot where the person is making it for like like six to eight hours straight but the minute you taste that freaking gumbo you just melt i want to learn how to do that i want to learn how to make good gumbo good southern gumbo i already asked uh, some of my southern friends like the the types of hot sauces and stuff they use in their own meals because you you can get a good sense of which ones are good which ones are bad from uh, all these different perspectives because uh, i know my friend plague he loves sweet baby rays uh, i think it's a, it's like a basting sauce it, it's supposed to go on meat when you're you're cooking it but like you can use it as like dip and stuff like that too apparently and which i did do that and it's great with chicken nuggets it's great but i i do want to learn that i also want to learn how to make ethiopian food weirdly enough uh i've been told that ethiopian food is like really really good and i've always wanted to try it haven't gotten the chance to do that especially not with covid but i eventually i want to learn how to do that you know I, I want to learn how to make all these different kind of cultures and their, like their their food types, right? Because all these different cultures have different takes on things. And you know, I, I want to get into a, a more broad perspective on what food is good to eat for myself. Because I'm very picky when I eat things. I, I like things made a specific way. And it took me a, a, a few years to get out of that cycle for the most part. But now, like, I eat a lot more than I used to. Like, I I used to not cook at all. This is not a joke. I used to not cook with vegetables. At all. Occasionally some onions. Occasionally. I, I used to not touch them at all. Now, and now it's, like, whatever. It's part of the meal. Uh, I'll put, like, carrots, onions. I've always cooked with garlic, but I, we don't count that. I, I I cook with a lot more leafy greens and stuff like that as well, specifically spinach. Uh, I really enjoy spinach now. It's weird. I'm fucking like mm, Popeye out here or some shit. <laughs> but I've I broadened my scope of how to make meals a lot more than I used to. And so getting the different perspectives of these different cultures and the way that they make food themselves, I feel like it's like really important for me if I continue wanting to be more of like a, a chef. Well, not really a chef. I'm just a cook. I don't think I need to, you know, prove myself by getting like a degree and being a chef and going to culinary school. Although I could do that eventually. Who knows? Minds change, right? But there are a few things that I refuse to cook, specifically fish. After working a few years at a fish factory, deboning, descaling, cutting up tuna, portioning out tuna as well, I've lost any kind of interest I have in fish. Although I don't doubt that, like eventually, I might get I might get an interest later on in life to get fish again once the the fish PTSD is out of my system. But no doubt, eventually it'll come back. I can still eat salmon if I want to, although it's really rare that I want salmon you know another thing that i refuse to cook as well is stuff like liver and intestines or stuff like tongues like cow tongue it, it just doesn't taste good man to me it just doesn't taste good in general i just i enjoy food and wanting to make meals for friends make meals for family and give them something good to eat because it's also part of like good memories right we all have like those stories growing up as kids where we had like one dinner with like all of our family or like a barbecue with our family and stuff like that although granted some people don't have these stories obviously and this is not a dig to them at all but m most of us have like th those stories as a kid right where uh dad made this meal for like six hours straight and then when we out when we ate it it's like it was a really good time everybody was sitting around the table having a great time smiling laughing all that kind of stuff and i like to provide that kind of almost almost said content <laughs> i i, I want to provide that kind of feeling right 
that that's one of the, the the best feelings that I could give my friends, my family, all that kind of stuff, right? And so that's why I like cooking because it makes people's day better. It makes people happy, right? And at the end of the day, is that's all I want to do is to make people happy with their day and not feel like it's as shitty all the time. Cause let, let, let's be real. We're like t over two years almost in the pandemic. Life shitty. Let's hope it ends soon. Well, life shitty. And even before then life was kind of shitty, but it, it's these smaller things in life, right? That make it great. And I feel like cooking is one of those things for me. Um, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Chalkboard. Great name. Trademarked. Uh, <clears throat> yes. I hope you have a lovely day. Remember to drink your vegetables and eat your water if you haven't already. Make sure to get some rest as well. If you don't get some rest, um, well, that sucks for you, but try not to. <laughs> yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. And I will catch you again at the next one. Goodbye.